Thanks for stopping by at Twisted Art Designs. Today I thought I would talk about digital stamps and how to use them. Sometimes they're called digit stamps, which is short for digital stamp. So what it is, is instead of having a stamp in the sense that we were used to in the past with a rubber stamp that is mounted on wood or acrylic or clear that you can cling and put onto a stamp block and stamp the image, a digit stamp is an image that can be resized and printed any size you want and then used in a variety of ways in your mixed media and art journals. I'm using this one as an example. This is the Boho Angel. There will be a uh, link in the description box below if you're interested in this image. But just to give you an idea of different ways that you can use a digital stamp image. I've just printed it onto regular computer paper and I have used an inkjet printer. Uh, there has been a lot of uh, controversy back and forth about well you can only you print on laser printers and use them that way. I've used my inkjet printer for using digital stamps from other people that I've purchased them from and for printing my own images and using them over and over again. I've used it on inkjet and I've never had a problem. So uh, with that being said, regular computer paper, an inkjet or laser printer is all you need. After you purchase an image, uh, you'll get a link for downloading that image. Once you download the image, you can print it out exactly as it is, which this is how the image looks on an 8.5 by 11 sheet. If you want the image to be larger or smaller, then you can uh, copy the image and paste it into a word processing uh, program or app that you have. And it is a JPEG image, so you can um, make the little box with the little arrows and you can spread it out make it bigger, make it smaller, shrink it down, use it any size you want, and then print it out. I've printed it out as is for this demonstration. So the first way to use the image would be to use it as a coloring book image. So I've printed it out onto paper and now I'm going to color it right here on the paper. You can use a variety of things to color it with. Colored pencils, Caran d'Ache Neo Color 2 crayons, Tombow markers, anything you want that you want to color the image. And then you can trim the image out, tear the image out, anything you want to do, and then apply it into your art journal. So you could create a fun background in your art journal and then Mod Podge this down as a focal point, similar to how you would do collaging and tear things out of magazines. Well, you're coloring this image and tearing it out and using this instead of a magazine image. Second way to use it would be to cut this out as it is with your uh, scissors, do a fussy cut and use an X-Acto knife and a, cu and a cutting mat to cut out the smaller images behind like the spaces back here behind our arms and you then apply this down to your page after you've made a background with your Mod Podge or your matte gel medium or your art glitter glue or a glue stick or however you like to apply things into your art journal. There's no right or wrong method. So once you've applied it down to your art journal page, then my suggestion, what I've liked to do and I've done in other videos is to use a clear gesso and go over the image in clear and then you can color the image right on your art journal page. So you can use acrylic paints, watercolor paints, Caran d'Ache Neo Color 2 crayons, Tombow markers, anything you want to then color this image once it's already been uh, adhered down to your page. So that's the second way of using it. Another way would be to use transfer paper. This is what transfer paper looks like. It comes in a pack and then it has these ball stylus pens that come with it. The transfer paper is very thin. It, it feels like tissue paper almost. And on one side, it's kind of a cloudy. And on the other side, it's slightly shinier. So what you want to do is take your image. And I'm just, this is a background painted in a book that I'm using as an art journal. So you would take the shiny side and put it down on your page wherever you want this image to be. Next you're going to put your image down over that transfer paper. Now what you want to do is take your stylus and you basically trace this entire image. So you just start and you do a even pressure and when you push down 
and you go along that image, when you move this away, the line will be on the paper. So you're going to go around this whole thing and you're going to basically draw over it, trace over it, push down with your stylus and transfer it onto your page. Once it's transferred into your book, then you can feel free to color it, do whatever you want with it, and it won't be on white paper. It's going to be right on your background that you've created and right on your art medium. So once you have traced over this whole image with your little stylus, you just carefully pick up and remove the image and the transfer paper. And now your image is right on your art journal, on the background that you created. So that's another great way of using a digital stamp. And your transfer paper is a wonderful thing. You can use it over and over again. It did, um, you can see when you hold this up to the light, I'm holding it up to the light, you can see where the carbon came off of the paper. It doesn't get on your hands. It doesn't transfer under your hands. But you could put this down and you could use this again and again until there's hardly any carbon left. You may get a little bit of speckled lines, but it's not like it's a waste. There's a lot of image left on this page to reuse carbon paper over and over again. So carbon is one of the things that I truly enjoy using for transferring an image. You can use coloring book images, digital stamps, all kinds of things with with transfer paper and I will put a link for um, where you can purchase some carbon paper that comes with the styluses. So this is another great way of using your digital stamp and what I like about digital stamps if you purchase a rubber stamp or a stamp set a clear stamp set and you put it onto your clear blocks whatever size it is is the only size it's going to be so when you stamp it on something and you use it it, it stays the same every time you use it. The, this image, a digital stamp image, can be resized, so that's what makes it beneficial. You can change it, use only a portion of it. You could use just this much of it on a mixed media piece and maybe make it bigger and put it on a canvas. There's so many things that you can do. Make it smaller and put it on a tag. Um, so resizing the image is beneficial in a digital stamp. The other reason they're great is you can use them over and over again. So you could print this out as many times as you want. Um, store your digital images in a file on your computer, you know, and label the file Digistamp. So you can go in there, find an image that you have stored in there that maybe you've already used in one way, use it in a different way. Maybe you just want to use her body and not use her angel wings and use a collage image from a magazine for her head but use this use this body so there's so many different ways that you can use it you keep that digital stamp in a file you reuse it over and over again you print it out many many times and you can um, color it over and over again many different ways so they're very versatile so hopefully that gave you some ideas. If that didn't give you enough tips and tricks and ideas for using a digit stamp, you might want to uh, Google it or look around on YouTube. There's probably a million other videos on interesting ways of using a digit stamp. But this just gets you started, gives you several ideas on how to use one once you've purchased them. If you're like me, you really enjoy them and you'll find that you're searching around and trying to find all different kinds of digit stamps to use in your artwork. They're lots of fun. And digit stamp images are copyright images. So if you are going to use a digi digital stamp in your artwork, you need to be careful. Um, if you're going to use it exactly like this in its original form and you're using it just in your art journal just for play, there's no problem. If you're going to use it on something that you're going to sell. So say you're going to make um, a junk journal or a journal and you want to use this image in your journal to resell it. You either have to get permission from the original artist in order to use it in that manner or you have to alter this. Like I said, cutting out this image and using just her body and then collaging and using a different thing for her head and not using the wings, making it making it change, to, you'd have to change it like in 50% or more in a change, um, then it would be okay to use it in that manner. So be sure if you're going to use a digital stamp image for something that you're going to sell, be sure you get the permission from the original artist and the seller of the product 
or you're changing it up completely before using it for an item to sell. So why not give a Digistamp a try? See how you like it. So they're very versatile. So hopefully that gave you some ideas. If that didn't give you enough tips and tricks and ideas for using a Digistamp, you might want to uh, Google it or look around on YouTube. There's probably a million other videos on interesting ways of using a Digistamp. But this just gets you started, gives you several ideas on how to use one once you've purchased them. So thanks for stopping by. Now go create some fun art today. Art soothes the heart.